Welcome to the Richmond Rent Program's presentation on handling habitability problems. My name is Fred Tran, Deputy Director of the Richmond Rent Program. Before we begin the presentation, there is important information that landlords and tenants should know about the ending of the state's eviction moratorium, the continued availability of rental assistance, the ability to evict or not to evict that's tied to rent assistance. The state's eviction moratorium expired on September 30th, 2021. Starting October 1, 2021, there is no prohibition on non-payment of rent evictions for tenants who are still experiencing financial hardship. Instead of only having to pay 25% of rent, landlords may demand 100% of rent. Despite the state's eviction moratorium ending, Tenants and landlords may still apply for rent assistance through the Richmond Rapid Response Fund to avoid evictions. Richmond's City Council passed Measure P on the November 8, 2022 ballot. A majority of Richmond voters passed the initiative amending the Richmond Rent Ordinance to limit rent increases for regulated units to 3% or 60% of consumer price index, whichever is less. For more information on Measure P, access the rent program's rent increase website at the presented link. Now let's jump into the presentation on handling habitability problems. In this presentation, we will first do a quick overview of the Richmond Rent Ordinance. We will also go over key habitability laws, policies, and procedures. We will then explore one important way to compel repairs for some rentals and the tenant's petition to reduce the rent. Next, we will examine Richmond's eviction protections and the connection between the evictions and habitability issues. We will then discuss the requirements to pay relocation assistance in certain situations, including temporary and permanent relocation requirements. Then we will look at landlords tenants rights regarding landlords entry to make repairs. We will also explore both state and local law that can place limitations on a landlord's ability to raise or collect rent in certain situations. Finally, we will discuss the connection between ability problems and landlord tenant rights around breaking a lease. First, let's start with a quick overview of the rent ordinance. It's important to know which rental properties are covered by which rent ordinance. There are three categories of rental properties in Richmond. Fully covered, meaning properties where both rent control and just cause eviction protections apply. Fully covered properties are generally those rental units that were built with permits on or before February 1, 1995. Tenants and landlords in these properties may petition for rent reduction or rent increase for various reasons. The next type of residential rent property are the partially covered units where only just cause evictions protections apply and the rents are not regulated through the rent ordinance. These properties include governmentally subsidized rental units, condominiums, post-February 1, 1995 constructions with a certificate of occupancy, and properties with one dwelling unit on one parcel, commonly known as single family homes. The third type of property that are generally considered fully exempt from all provisions of the rent ordinance, meaning they are not subject to the rent control and just cause evictions protections. Fully exempt rent units include those where the landlord and the tenant share a kitchen and or a bathroom. Single family homes where a permitted ADU was added and the main house is owner occupied and retirement homes. 
The purpose of this slide is to demonstrate how properties with an ADU added to a single family home can determine the coverage of the rental unit under the rent ordinance. Please review the five scenarios presented with tenants and landlords living in the units. Please note, if both the main house and ADU are built after February 1, 1995, they are both exempt from rent control. The maximum allowable rent is the maximum rent that can be charged for a fully covered unit. The agreed upon rent amount cannot exceed the maximum allowable rent, but it could be less. The maximum allowable rent remains the same. Next, we'll discuss the laws, policies, and procedures. State law requires that landlords provide rental units meet certain standards for habitability. This law is also known as implied warranty of habitability. Richmond's municipal code and local housing law mirrors the state habitability standards, but provide clarity and detail about the habitability standards. Please note, the state code is implied in every California residential lease. Landlords must provide rental units that are in habitable condition and fit to live in. In order for the property to be habitable, it must have all the followings listed. Please review. A tenant must reasonably care for the rented property and the common areas under state law. This means a tenant must keep the rented unit in good condition. A tenant must also repair all damage that he or she causes or that is caused by the tenant's guests, children, pets. California Civil Code Section 1941-2 requires the tenant to do the following listed. Please review. We are now going to discuss the steps to address habitability problems, including tips for documenting habitability problems and how to request housing inspections. First, let's go over the keys that should be taken to address the problems. We recommend you educate yourself on your rights and responsibilities. This may start with a conversation with the rent program housing counselor. Next, you should document the problem or complaint in writing. If the landlord is not being responsive, the tenant may request a housing inspection with the city of Richmond. Governmentally subsidized tenants may request an inspection from the housing authority. If the property is fully covered, a tenant may file a rent reduction petition or request a rent program mediation to encourage the landlord to address the issues. Tenants are encouraged to write letters or emails of the issues or complaints to the landlord or the property manager. Attaching photos, videos are an effective way to document the problem. Keep copies for your own records. If you are engaged in verbal communications, it is recommended that you summarize the conversation in writing to avoid unnecessary disputes or misunderstandings. If the landlord is not responsive to legitimate complaints, the tenant may consider documenting the problem through an inspection by the city to compel the landlord to address the issue. Using a chronological approach to memorializing the problem is important in framing the narrative. The case may go to the rent board hearing or to court. Be mindful that anything you write may become part of the court action, wherein you would be required to appear before a judge to explain the complaint. You may hurt your credibility if your letter or email appears unreasonable or abusive. To request a housing inspection, please contact the City of Richmond's 
Residential Rental Inspection Program at 510-690-8260 or at richmondrrip at ci.richmond.ca.us. Please note, landlord's contact information must be provided at the request. Section eight tenants, if they believe the landlord is violating the terms, they contact the housing authority or the housing assistant payment contract with the lease and the Contra Costa County Housing Authority at 925-957-7023. Upon determination that an inspection is needed, it may take up to 10 days or more for making the request complete. The inspector will notify the landlord if there's code violation that is found, and the landlord may face fees or fines for failure to correct the violation. For rental units that are fully covered, a tenant has the right to file a petition to reduce the rents. This process may encourage and compel a landlord or property manager to correct the problem. A tenant can petition to reduce the rent if the following criteria are met. The landlord has been informed about the problem. There is a decrease in habitability or reduced of space or service. Tenant resides in a fully covered rental unit. Tenants who live in partially covered or fully exempt properties cannot file a petition. Tenants who reside in partially covered rental units can still request mediations through the rent program to try to resolve the matter. After filing a petition for the habitability problem, the landlord and tenant attend a hearing where both parties can present their evidence. Alternatively, the hearing examiner may also issue an administrative decision if there are no objections by opposing parties. The rent program hearing examiner will examine the facts submitted in the petition and the opposing party's objection. The examiner will hear the testimony from both sides of the, of, of the case to get to a decision. An award can be issued for rent credit or refund via an order, generally occurs several weeks after the hearing is held. Both parties may appeal the hearing, and then it will go to a five-member rent board that acts as an appellate court, which will issue a final decision, which may be also appealed at Superior Court. Many people are unaware that the landlord's ability to evict can be tied to habitability. We will begin by examining the eight just causes for evictions in the city of Richmond. Residential tenants can be only evicted in the city of Richmond by the landlord if one of the eight just cause listings here are presented. Three of the reasons require relocation payments with the asterisk as noted. The first connection between evictions and habitability issues is nuisance. Landlords may proceed with an eviction process if the tenant's behavior creates a nuisance. Nuisance may include, but not limited to the following listed. Please review. A written warning notice must be issued prior to issuing a notice of termination of tenancy for the three just cause for evictions for the following three. Breach of the lease, nuisance, or failure to give access. Habitability problems can be used as a defense to an eviction lawsuit. Also, retaliatory actions taken because of an eviction is illegal. Chronologically documenting is key to protecting the tenancy. Landlords must be in compliance with the rent ordinance requirements to evict the tenant. Now we'll discuss relocation payments.
Temporary relocation assistance is required on the, re the relocation ordinance if habitability problems require repairs and abatement, the landlord must pay for the temporary relocation. Permanent relocation assistance is required. The landlord and tenant may agree for permanent relocation payments if after temporary relocation period ends and the tenant does not want to move back into the rental unit and finds an alternative housing. Temporary relocation payments must be provided to the tenant when they must temporarily vacate in order for a landlord to undertake substantial repairs. A notice of entitlement to relocate payments must be provided with the notice of temporary tenancy. Presented are the most updated temporary relocation payments amounts on a per day basis. Please review. Next presented are the most updated permanent relocation payments amounts for owner move in. Please review. Finally, presented are the permanent relocation payment amounts for withdrawal from the rental market, substantial repairs, or due to governmental agency's order for the tenant to vacate the rental unit. Please review these amounts. Next, we will discuss the landlord's right to enter the unit to make repairs. If a tenant informs the landlord about a habitability problem, a landlord has an obligation to make necessary repairs. The landlord or their agent have the right to enter the rental unit to make the repairs after giving the tenant reasonable written notice. If the landlord violates the entry requirements, the landlord may be liable to penalties or lose the right to reset rents to market. The tenant does not need to be present for the landlord to lawfully enter. A landlord may enter only for the following reasons. In case of an emergency, to make necessary or agreed upon repairs or inspections, when the tenant has abandoned or surrendered the perimeter, pursuant to a court order, finally checking water submetering. Next, we will discuss the state and local limitations on a landlord's ability to raise or collect rents and how it relates to habitability. California Civil Code Section 1942.4 prevents a landlord from demanding rent, collecting rent, issuing a notice of rent increase, or issuing a three-day notice to pay or quit where all of these four factors exist. Please review. As stated, all four must exist for California Civil Code Section 1942.4 for a tenant to take necessary action. A hearing examiner may deny a landlord from taking a future vacancy rent increase if there's evidence that there was intent by the landlord to force a tenant to move out by not making necessary repairs. Hearing examiners may deny the annual general adjustment increase until the landlord comes into compliance. The next section will discuss our breach of the lease agreement. If a tenant breaks a lease, they are liable for the unpaid rents. The landlord must attempt to mitigate the unpaid rent damages by making a reasonable effort to re-rent the unit. The landlord may only charge rent as it becomes due. If a tenant vacates a rental unit due to habitability problems, the law may allow them to end their tenancy without giving a 30-day written notice. If the tenant vacates the property due to significant habitability issues and is sued by the landlord for unpaid rent, the tenant's right to vacate without providing a notice would be decided in court. 
Mediation is an option to resolve the habitability issue. A landlord or a tenant may request mediation through the rent program to help resolve the matter. We thank you for viewing the workshop and please see presented the rent program's contact information for any additional questions or comments.